Okay, record. Yeah, start record. Uh, let me see where we at. Uh, I gotta find the file. <laughs> I just want to point out it's one eleven right now. I I saw that too. Shaky Rafal. Shaky Rafal. Ball y'all don't fall. All right, let me find uh. Divine Mind Science, Blessings of Will Shake Off the Bamba. Oh, come on, where is this? Uh, so today, all the Bilal Mene Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah, Iraqi, Mene Rahim, Al Fatiha. Bismillah, Iraqi, Mene Rahim, Al Fatiha. Iraqi, Mene Rahim, Maliki, Al Medin. So today, as Staple Mona Sadiq, the sword of the true title, we are on the verse. Uh, the last two ayats of Surah Tabakura of the cow, which we recite three times in this practice. Does everyone, um, maybe if uh, Jedi Raymond has it, he might be able to post it up. In the, uh, I'm going to go pull it up right now, sir. So he can post it up. So th these two ayats, um, every ayat, so let me let me review. The first ayat we went over was uh, I'm praying that everyone review question. Is there anyone in this class who does not have Al Fatiha memorized? Bismillah Rahman Rahim. The Al Fatiha is the first surah in this practice. Anyone who does not have it memorized. I thought about that. I was like, wait, we got a lot of new disciples in this class. And I'm going over these other verses for this practice. But everyone should have the Al-Fatiha memorized. If you don't have Al-Fatiha memorized, uh, go make two rakats and come back. No, I'm sorry. We're lying. <laughs> so we went over that. Al Fatiha is in the four short surahs. Then the next one was Ayatul Kursi. So after Ayatul Kursi, the two weeks ago we went over Lakata Akum Rasulu Minan Fusikun Azizun Alehi Ma Anitum Marisun Alekum Bumufminin Rauf Rahimun Fit Fakul Hasbi Allahu La ilaha illahu wa lay twakutu wahu wa rabba arshaladin. So today, we need to go over the third verse in this practice, which is the last two ayats of Surah Tabakara. Now, these two last ayats are very important. Every ayat in the Quran is very important, but these two specifically because... Um, Let's tell the story again. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and also this is Rabia Awal. This is the month in which our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born. Uh, he was born on the 12th of this month, Rabia Awal. I took my dad's in a truck, pulled up in her yard while her husband was standing on the porch and took the side. Mute your phone, please. Please mute your phone. Um, Trump. Sorry, yeah, hi, yeah. Yeah, tell you. Hey, yo, sister, mute your phone. We don't want to hear about that devil in the White House. They really put it there. No, in their yard. Bre Brenda and them, this is their personal yard. They put Trump signs yo! up. You know, got signs up. Mute your phone. We do not need to hear this whole conversation. Thank you very much. So, um, the last two verses of Surah Tabakura, Bismillah ar rahim the Prophet Muhammad salam, was sitting with his Sahaba companions. I was saying, this is the birth of, the Prophet Muhammad was born in this month on the Islamic calendar, Rabia Awal, on the 12th of this month. So 
many Sufi orders are doing celebrations called the Mawlid, which is the birth of the Prophet Muhammad celebration. And it's, it's a big blessing to celebrate the Mawlid. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba talks about it in his Kasai, Deskukulu. And he says, just by giving somebody a cup of coffee or a cup of tea at the Mawlid can put you in Jannah, in heaven. That's how much blessing it is. So this entire month, we will be talking about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We want you to increase your prayers upon Muhammad during this month, but we will get to that uh, after the class. But it's very important. I sent out in the, um, the new Dara group on WhatsApp. If you're not in the Dara group, send me a message, I'll add it to you. I sent out a 40 video lecture series by uh, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf on the Prophet Muhammad's life, peace be upon him. So uh, I'm watching that this entire month and uh, I advise you to watch at least two. If you watch two videos a day, within 28 days, you can finish it. But uh, it's, we need to know about the Prophet Muhammad's life, so going forward, especially on the Wednesday night class, uh, I, I said I would give a talk about Sheikh Ibn Rafal this Wednesday. So I will keep my word on that. But after that, every Wednesday, uh, we will talk about the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So the Prophet was sitting with his friends, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his Sahabas, and he said to them, there are two verses in the Quran that if you recite them at night, they will suffice you. They will take care of you. And the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, what to uh, Brother Akil, I see you calling me. Hold on. What did he say? You're not in that group, Akil? SubhanAllah, Astaghfirullah. Man. Okay, so um, he said there are two verses in the Quran. If you recite them at night, they will take care of you. They will suffice you. The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, what two verses are these? He said it was the last two verses in Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter. I read this hadith when I was studying the Sahih Muslim, when I lived in Senegal, but I didn't take the time to memorize them. A uh, long time ago, when I was studying with Sheikh Nazim and the Naqshbandi Tariqa, uh, in one of Sheikh Nazim's books, Sheikh Nazim says that the last two ayats of Surah Al-Baqarah contain hidden secrets from Allah that only the ones who are reciting these last two ayats will receive these, these secrets from Allah. I read that in Sheikh Nazim's book about these last two ayats. I did not memorize it. I read the Sahih Muslims when I was in Senegal about these two ayats. I asked about the Prophet Muhammad speaking about these importance of these two verses. I did not memorize them. While I lived in Senegal, I had the blessing to travel to northern Senegal to uh, the Futajalo area in a city called Podor, which was a Tijani city. Spent time there with the Tijani sheikhs and had a chance to speak with the uh, head sheikh in the city. May Allah grant him more light. He has since passed on. I had a one-on-one -on -one talk with him and I asked him, as I ask every sheikh that I meet, give me something that can help me on my journey of, of travel. The Sheikh said very few words to me. He said, memorize, memorize, memorize the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah and recite them as much as you can at night. That's all he said. So after those three sources, I said, what? I memorized the verses immediately. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amana Rasulu bima unzila ilayhi marabihi wa muhminum. Kulun amana bilahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rasuli. La nu fariku bayna hadim mi rasuli wa kalu samitna wa tana gufranaka rabana wa ilayka al masir. La yu kalifu lahu nafsani la usa halaha makasabat wa laya matasabat. Rabana la tu akhina ina sina o atana. Rabana wa la tahmilalena isran kama hamatuhu alazina min kaplina. Rabbana wala tu hamuna malataka talanabi wafuana wa kulana wa hamna enta maulana pensuna la kamo kafirin. I'm going to read it in English. 
inshallah, and then we'll practice the pronunciation. But the secret I have found out in these verses, well, there's many, but one is that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, when you recite these verses at night, they will take care of you. From my own personal experience, when you read these verses at night, they make your wealth and provisions come to you easily. These two verses can be the end of any financial difficulties that you're having. I'm gonna say that again. Just by memorizing these verses, inshallah, reciting them at night three times after the Maghrib is what I use, but you know, more is better if you can because the Sheikh told me to recite them as much as you can at night. When you recite these three verses, they clear the way for money, wealth, and prosperity to come to you. So let's read these in English, inshallah, and then we'll practice it. And um, 285 and 286. Bismillah ar-Rahim. Older Bismillah ar-Rahim. The Messenger Muhammad وسلم, believes in what has been sent down to him from his Lord. Very interesting. I'm talking with uh, one of the disciples in our order. Uh, she is from East Africa. I was speaking with her uh, two days ago because she was having some doubts about the Quran that was written by Prophet Muhammad وسلم. And I said, wait, 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 hold up. You grew up in, a, I didn't tell her this, but I was thinking you grew up in a Muslim family in a Muslim city in East Africa. And you just said, I'm having doubts about the Quran that was written by Muhammad We need to make this clear. Prophet Muhammad did not write the Quran. So I was explaining to her that no, this says the messenger Muhammad believes in what was sent down to him from his Lord. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not write the Quran. The Quran and all other holy books are inside of one book with Allah called the Ummul Kitab. Write that down, you'll be a Muslim scholar. In the Holy Quran, Allah says, there is a book with me in heaven. And the name of this book in Arabic is called the Ummul Kitab, which means the mother of all the books. So the Holy Quran is the last part of this mother of all the books and all of the holy books are inside of this Umul Kitab, mother of the books, the original Torah, the original gospels, uh, the Bhagavad Gita from Krishna. All of the holy books are inside of one book with God called the Umul Kitab. And the angel, Jabril, peace be upon the angel, is the messenger who brought revelations from this book, the mother of the books, to all of the prophets. So the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was 40 years old, inside of the cave on Mount Hira, outside of Mecca, the angel Debril came to him and said, Ikra, and taught him the first verses of the Quran. It took a it took 23 years for the entire Quran to be revealed. Listen to this. The Holy Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu around events in his life. Allah did not give him the whole Quran on the night of power in one setting. Things will happen in Prophet Muhammad's life and verses will come and they will be revealed to him. So I don't know if you knew that or not, but the Prophet Muhammad, one, did not write the Quran. To the uh, Prophet Muhammad was Nabi Lumi. He was an unlettered prophet to where the people in Mecca said that he did not know how to read or write. Prophet Muhammad was not a person of letters. He was not known to write anything down. When the Prophet started reciting the verses of Quran in Mecca, the verses were so eloquent, they said, oh my God, Muhammad has gone crazy. He is a crazy poet now. That's why there's a verse in the Quran that says, oh, he is not a crazy poet. 
he is revealing verses from his Lord. It's amazing that Allah had to address that in the Quran, sending a verse in the Holy Quran saying, Prophet Muhammad is not a crazy poet. He is revealing verses from me, Allah. That's a verse in the Quran. So make that clear. Prophet Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible. Uh, there's a book called um, uh, uh, Muhammad in the Bible. There's a verse in the Bible that says, we will send the prophet in whom we will put words in his mouth and he will not speak of his own accord. This is a clear reference in the Bible to a prophet who's coming, who Allah will give him the words that he will reveal. I just wanted to say that. This Holy Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the last section of the Umu Kitab, the mother of the books that is found on the hidden tablet. The hidden tablet is what some people call the uh, 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 Akashic records. But in Arabic, it's called the Loho Makfus. On the Loho Makfus is the destiny from the beginning of time to the end of time. Everything that happens in the world is already written on the Loho Makfus, but also the Omoki tab is there. So it says in this book, Bismillah Rahim, verse 285, the messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, believed in what was sent down to him from his Lord, and so do the believers. Each one believes in Allah, his angels, his books, and his messengers. We, we make no distinction between one and another of his messengers. This is a very, very big secret from Allah. Allah says right here, we make no distinction between one and another of his messengers. Why does Allah say that? There is only one Allah, there is only one prophet, and there is only one holy book. We make no distinctions between the messengers. It's telling you that, esoterically speaking, Muhammad وسلم, is the only prophet that ever came to earth. There is something called Nur Muhammad, the light of Muhammad, Nur Muhammad. This Nur Muhammad وسلم, was implanted on the forehead of Prophet Adam salam. Nur Muhammad was inside of every prophet. Let me say that again. Nur Muhammad was in Adam. It was in Jesus. It was in Solomon. It was in David. It was in Job. It was in all the prophets until the Nur, the light of Muhammad, was inside of his father named Abdullah. How do we know this? There's a story when you read the Sira, when you study the story of Prophet Muhammad's life, وسلم, there was an old Jewish woman in Mecca who was reading the Torah. And clearly in the Torah, it speaks of the coming of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the Jewish scholars knew that Prophet Muhammad was coming, peace be upon him. They knew what time period he was coming. And they knew what region of the world he was coming in. The, the Jewish scholars who read the Torah, the rabbis were looking for Prophet Muhammad to come, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even in the Old Testament, it says his name would be Ahmed. Now, what's interesting is Prophet Muhammad's mother, Amina, Amina, Amina. What was Muhammad's mother's name? His mother was named Amina. His father was named Abdullah. Amina, the Prophet's mother, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was going to name the Prophet Muhammad Ahmed. She was going to name him Ahmed. But right before she gave birth to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the angel Jibril came to her and said, when your child is born, name your child Muhammad. Amazing. Miracles were happening in Prophet Muhammad's life وسلم, before he was born. The angel Jibril came to his mom who had chosen the name Ahmed. Ahmed Bamba, Ahmed Tijani, Ahmed Rifai, all of these Katoobs had the name Ahmed. Message. But um, Amina was visited by the angel Jibril when she was pregnant and the angel told her to name her son Muhammad وسلم, so Muhammad was the first human being to have the name Muhammad. 
There's no name on planet Earth more than the name Muhammad. There's nobody, Muhammad, of all the names on the planet Earth, the name Muhammad is the most commonly used name on the planet Earth because of so many Muslims who are named Muhammad. So, okay, come on. So uh, how did we get there? We make no distinction among the prophets. Every prophet is a recipient of uh, the Nur Muhammad وسلم, to the point where the light of Muhammad was on his father Abdullah's forehead. The Jewish woman in Mecca who was uh, expecting the coming of a prophet in that area. And I must say, I love all religions. But I got a beef with the Jewish people. And my beef with the Jewish people is very valid because they're racist. They're racist. They're racist. They're racist. They're racist. The Jewish scholars said this. We know a prophet Muhammad. We know a, we know a prophet is coming in this region. But the Jewish people said, if this prophet that comes is not from one of the 12 tribes of Israel, we will not accept him. What kind of ish is that? You know a prophet is coming. Your rabbis are looking for him to come around a certain time period. You even know what region he's in. But those racist bastards, excuse my language, those racists said, we will not accept him if he's not from the tribes of Israel. That is, that's the only problem I got with the Jewish people. From the beginning, they said they would not accept Muhammad and Lefsi was not, and he was from the Christ. So, okay, let me get off of my own pet peeve and get back into the teaching. So we make no distinction between, oh, finish the story, Sheikh. The Jewish woman who knew he was coming, when she saw Abdullah, she saw the light on his forehead. She would go and she said, maybe that light is the light of the prophet that's coming in this area. The Jewish lady would go to Abdullah and ask him all the time, marry me, would you marry me? Would you marry me? She wanted that light to come into her and she wanted to be the mother of the prophet that was coming, that she knew was coming in that region. Abdullah didn't marry. She asked him many times to marry her. When Abdullah, Prophet Muhammad's mother, got married to Khadija, Mustafaullah, got married to Amina, after the wedding, the next time the Jewish woman saw Abdullah in the market, she, she ran up to him, looked at him and said, oh, and left and didn't say nothing because the light was gone. The light had left him and went into Muhammad's mother, Amina. So this is why we say, and it says in the Quran, we make no distinction between one and another of the messengers. And they say, we hear, we, we hear and we obey. Now it says, and then it says, um, we ask you for your forgiveness, O Lord. We ask you for your forgiveness. And to you is the return. Allah burdens not a person beyond the scope of what they can bear. This is very important. All of us go to, through tests and trials in life, but the Quran says Allah does not burden you with something that you cannot handle. He gets reward for that good which he has earned, and he is punished for that evil which he has earned. This is the great, great, great teaching. Allah says, to Allah is your return. Allah didn't say the return is to heaven. Allah says, and to Allah is the return. The journey of the Sufi is this return to Allah while in human form. Okay? Allah burdens not with you, burdens you not with the, a burden that you can bear. He gets the reward of what is good and he earns the, the punishment of what is evil he has done. Let's remove this concept that Allah is a punishing God. Most of us who grew up in the Christian doctrine believe that God is a punisher. No, no, no. Allah does not punish people. Remove that. The law of karma is clear in the Holy Quran, and it's referred to right here where it says, 
you will receive the reward of goodness for what the good you do, and you will receive the punishment for the evil you do. Allah says in the Holy Quran, the good is from me, Allah, and the bad is from your own deeds. Let me say that again. Allah doesn't punish you. You punish your own self by the, the negative uh, uh, effects of your negative deeds coming back to you. Okay? Mm. Our Lord, punish us not if we forget or fall into error. Very good prayer. Our Lord, do not punish us if we forget or if we make mistakes. This is very good. Uh huh. Our Lord, lay not on us a burden like that which you did lay on those before us. SubhanAllah is saying that, yes, we know that we are going to have tests and trials, but do not make the trials as great as those who came before us who were tested and tried by you. Our Lord, put not on us a burden greater than we have the strength to bear. That's clear. It's good to pray to Allah to lighten the trials and do not, uh, oh Allah, do not give us a trial we cannot bear. Pardon us and grant us forgive. Oh, wait. Yeah. Pardon us and grant us forgiveness. Wafuana, wafilana, warhamna. I, I'm a, uh, you're going to memorize this, but I want to have mercy on us. Wafuana. Pardon, uh, write this, write this things down because it may take you a while. It may take you a while to memorize the whole ayah, two ayahs, but I want to at least give you this dua that you can recite. The ending of these last two verses is this, these words. Wafuana. Wa, W A. Fu, F U, Anna, A N A. Wafuana means pardon us. And it comes from the word Al 99 name, Al Afu, the partner. Al Afu is the partner. So we have Wafuana, pardon us. Wafirlana. Uh, W A G F I R L A N A. Wag, W A G, fear, F I R, Lana, L A N A. Wag, fear, Lana is forgiveness from the word Al Gafur, the forgiver. Wafuana, Wag, fear, Lana. And the last one is Warhamna, W A R. Dash H A M dash N A. Warhamna from Rahma from the word Rahma is have mercy on us. So a good doer after salat, after you say the salams, say three times. Wafwana, wafilana, warhamna. Wafwana, wafilana, warhamna. Wafwana, pardon me. Wafilana, forgive me. Warhamna. Have mercy on me. This is how these ayahs end. Wafwana, wafilana, wahamna. Then it says, Enta Molana, Fensurna, Alau Kalmo, Kafirin. You are our caretaker, Molana. You are our patron. Fensurna, Alau Kalmo, Kafirin. Make us victorious over the non believers. So that is the English translation. I want to stop here. And ask, does anybody have any questions over the English before we uh, practice the Arabic? It's yeah, long. Shake. Oh. <laughs> Just real quick, you said Wafwana is forgive us. Wafwana is what? Wafwana is pardon us. You're pardon. asking Allah for pardon for, for any bad deeds. Okay. Um, and then Wafilana is what? Well, feeling that is the part that you're saying, forgive me, forgive us. Okay, forgive us. And then, Wahamna. What, uh, what, 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 is, uh, have mercy on us. Okay. We all That's need true. to be pardoned for our sins. We all need to be forgiven for our sins. And we all need the mercy of Allah. Shake. Hebrew fall. 
Is it? <laughs> is I it can't possible? hear the word shake without saying he performed after. Forgive me. I got Tourette's syndrome for shaking before. But go ahead. Is it possible to translate the last word, Catherine, instead of as a person, as an idea? Like grant us victory over disbelief. Brother, a... my ox in the class of love. Akbar, <laughs> we miss you. Ox, salam alaikum. Say that again. I missed the class, brother. Is is it possible? And I miss to you, brother. Is it possible to translate kafirun as an idea rather than a person? And by that, I mean, can you translate it as grant us victory over disbelief, as opposed? Yes, to yes, yes. It, it, yeah, man. Because when you read the Arabic lexicon, you know how in the English dictionary, they give one, two, they might give two or three many meanings for one word in the English dictionary. Yeah. If you ever study the Arabic lexicon that has the Arabic language and definitions, in the Arabic lexicon, they may have up to six different meanings for one Arabic root word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it can be and protect us make us victorious over disbelief. That can be one of the meanings. Now I wanna say, I don't like when Muslims call people kufar or kafir. A Muslim is quick to call somebody a kufar, or a kafir. But the kafara, uh, someone is not a, a, a kafar mean, kufar means to reject the truth. So someone is not a kafir unless you took the time to tell them about la ilaha illallah. And then they rejected it and said, no, there's not one God, there's many gods. So be careful who you call a non-believer. Because especially when you're dealing with a Muslim, you are, there's one group of Muslims, the Salafi Wahhabi Muslims, they are so quick to say, he ain't Muslim. He don't have a long beard. He ain't Muslim. He don't have his pants legs rolled up. Do you know it's a hadith from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that says that whenever someone says to, a, to someone, you are not Muslim, then one of those people is not Muslim. This is why I, I don't give a damn if I see somebody eating pork, drinking a 40 ounce of beer, smoking a blunt. I ain't gonna never say that person ain't Muslim. Because Prophet Muhammad said, Islam might still be in their heart. Prophet Muhammad says in the Hadith, when someone says someone is not Muslim, one of those people is not Muslim. He says either their statement is true and that person has rejected la ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah, or if that person still believes in Allah, whoever said they were not Muslim, that person is outside of Islam. They are not Muslim. So, uh, this is just something I wanted to share. Who else? I think uh, Jedi Raymond, you had a question, inshallah. Uh, yes, sir. Bismillah. Um, you were earlier talking about Allah is not a punishing God, and then you started talking about karma. Um, I, I wanted to make sure I understood correctly. Would, would what you were talking about be considered in Islam the law of Kifara? I know I'm probably mispronouncing it. Kifara? Kifara. I, I don't know this word, my, my brother. What is kifara? Uh, the definition I wrote in my notebook is whatever you give, be it good or bad, you will get it back. However you give, either in a good way or bad way, Allah will judge and return back to you accordingly. That's exactly what it is. Yes. Okay. You do good, you get good. You do bad, you get bad. Uh, the verse, uh, There's a verse, one of my favorite verses in Surah Al-Rahman is how desal is sign on is sign. How does Al Isan al Isan? You hear the word Isan. And they translate it as surely the reward for goodness is goodness. Surely the reward for goodness is goodness. Um, one of my teachings that I always teach is a master is a master of their thoughts, words, and actions. Hold on, there's too much sun coming in. Hold on. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A master is a master of their thoughts, words, and actions, okay? So 
the good is from a lot and the bad is from your own deeds. So does anyone else have a, a, a question or a comment about these um, last two verses of Sur Tabakara that we just went over in English? Anybody have a question or a comment about them? So if there's no more questions, uh, I think Jedi, yeah, please. I love questions. Please ask. Okay. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but it in the version I have when he says, when they use Rab, R-A-A-B, uh -huh. it's, it's usually translated as like Lord, but I've seen it translated as like, oh, merciful one, things like that, that make you feel Allah is more merciful than Lord. Um, now, yeah, you know, uh, not saying that I know anything, but from studying some Sufi texts, the word, the way they translate Rob as Lord is a very loose translation because they don't, a lot of times, the Arabs translate things loosely because they don't have a lot of metaphysical background, some of these translators, like one, one, one huge error in the Quran and translation. And the Quran it says Deen of Islam. The, the, the translators translate this word Deen lazily and just put the religion of Islam. But Islam is not a religion. The word Deen actually means way of life or way that you live your life. So the Deen of Islam is, should be translated the way of life that we call Islam. So this word Rab, according to people who know more than me, they have said the word Rab means the nourisher, the one who takes you from the beginning to the end of your development. The word Rab is, uh, uh, when I read this, I was like, whoa, that's much more beautiful than saying Lord. The, the, the Sheikh was saying the word Rab is like saying Allah is a farmer for your soul. You know mm -hmm. how a farmer takes care of his crops, waters, mm -hmm. uh, removes the weeds, makes sure his crops grow to fruition, and saying that the rob is the nourisher and the, the, the guardian of your soul that takes you from one state of existence to the higher state of existence. So the rob, ah, that's why they have something called a Sheikh Murabi. You the word rob and Sheikh Murabi. A is a shake who gives you practices to raise your station. So that's implied in the word shake Rabbi. Rab meaning the one, Rabbi, the shake who has the ability to give you practices to raise your station. So, yes, it, it's more than just that, uh, Brother Ma. And well, we love this feedback in the class. Anyone else have a question or comment before we practice the translation? Okay, uh, let's go. Uh, um, let me look at the way I translated in. Uh, so the first part, I will say each part three times for practice. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amana Rasulu bima unzila ilayhi mirabbihi wa mu'minun. Is the first part. Two more times. Amana Rasulu bima umzila ilayhi mirabbihi wa mu'minu. Amana Rasulu bima umzila ilayhi mirabbihi wa mu'minu. One person, please, uh, let me hear one person try to pronounce that. Jake, I, I have a question. I have a question, Jake. I love questions. Please. I love questions. Please ask. I learned the verses by listening to them be enchanted. So I can do this verse chanted, but I can't speak it like that. Is that a problem? No, let me hear you chant it. Go ahead one time. Amana rasulu biman unzila ilahi nin rabihi walimuk minun. 
kuluna mana bila iwa mala ikati iwa kutubi iwa usuli. That's the beginning. I listen to, I find one that I like that touches my soul and then I listen to it and learn it from that. But I, but I. I Do all of us a favor, please send me that recording of the one that you like the most so I can share it with the disciples so, uh, that, because I still can remember two years ago, a friend of mine asked me to say some MC rhyme. So I said this rhyme <laughs> I'm about to say, the rhyme was deaf and it went this way. <laughs> that long ago i don't have it memorized but i read safe or read uh, among other concise probably two or three times a week and, and brother shamel what have you experienced from from reading this safe or more because for a lot of new disciples this is a new this is a new practice for them what was your experience from reading um, it? well brother briefly and i i believe me and um brother mayat have shared experience about with me I find a certain alignment, brother, because uh, a certain alignment where it is flow in my life, where it's generally seen line up for me as I would have them line up. And um, I. No, what I was saying was that I, I just find that there's a, a general positive alignment in my life wherein things seem to be flowing harmoniously in almost all aspects of my life um, when I'm on these practices on, on a regular basis, which is, uh, you know, what I try to do, brother. Alhamdulillah, that's, that's very good. Uh, um, the verses of the Quran are efficacious, meaning when you recite them, they produce an effect in your life. So that's a blessing that it creates a, a smooth flow of events in your life from doing the practices. Allahu Akbar. Uh, one more person. I would need one more person to try. Amana Rasulu bima umzila ilahi min rabbihi wa mu'minun. Can someone else try to recite it one time? I, I'd like to try, brothers, just that when I, I although I read these regularly, I'm basically just um, pronouncing the syllables as I see them. So I don't have, a, like like Brother Maya just said it with an Islamic flow. I, with me, I've been basically just rereading it, but I'd like to try just if only to get your critique or your, you Oh know, yeah, Miss Mila, please. Yes, Alhamdulillah, please, brother. So from where, from, from, from 285 or from just from the- Yeah, from, from 285, the first part. Yes, sir. Now, okay, I'm glad we're practicing. Every time you say hi, it's actually he. Okay. 
Emanato Sulima Umzila Ilay Hai. See, in the Arabic, when they put H I, it's actually pronounced Ilay He. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I, I always had my questions about, you know, how I'm pronouncing it. So, I'm, you know, thank you for that. And that applies throughout the rest, the rest of the verses. Yeah, throughout the rest of the recitation, Emanato Sulu be my Umzila Ilay He. Mirabihi, Wamuhminum. Kulun Emana Bilahi, Wamalakati He. Wakutubihi, Warusulihi. So, yeah, when you read the transliterations, uh, even though it said in, our, in English it would say hi, but in Arabic the pronunciation is he. Um, should I continue? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Bismillah. Yes, brother. Amana Rafulu Bima Un Vila Ilahi Mindrabihi Wamuminun Kolun Amana Bilahi Wamala Ikatihi Wakatubihi Wa Rasuli Lanu Puri Bina Ahadin Min Rasuli Wa Kalu Sami Nawa Atanagaf Ranaka Wabana Wa Ilika Masir. Mashallah, man, listen to Allah Akbar, man. Yeah, that pronunciation is good, huh? Yeah, you, you got the first part. Now, um, I will practice the second one. Uh, let's see, we got Amana Sulu Ma Unzilahi Rabi Mufinun. Kulun Emana Bilahi Wa Malaikatihi Wa Kutubihi Wa Rusuli Lanu Fariku Baina Ahadin Mirosuli. Wahalu Samihna Watana Gubramnaka Rabana wa Ilekal Masir. Who would like to try the whole uh, verse 285? Salamu alaykum Shaykh. Wa alaykum salam. <laughs> Kulun amana bilahi wa mala ikatihi wa kutubihi ra rusuli. Lanu fariku baina ahadin min rusuli. Wa kalu samina wa atna gufranaka rabana wa alaykil masir. Alhamdulillah, that's very good. Very good. Takbir. Anyone else want to try uh, verse 285 before we go to 286? All right. Uh, now, verse two eighty six. No, oh, I, I, I hear Charlie Brown's teacher. His mom, his brother. I... Yeah, but <laughs> it sounds like uh -oh. wah 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 wah. So yeah, I'm 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 gonna. Yeah, go ahead. It's clear now. Go All ahead. right. Um. Huh? All your issues. Okay, okay, so uh I'll do verse two eighty six. Bismillah Manarahim La you Khalifu Lahu Nafsan Ila Wusaha Laha Makasabat. La you Khalifu Lahu Nafsan, Ila Wus Aha, Ila Makasabat. La you Khalifu Lahu Nafsan, Ila Wus Aha, Ila Makasabat. Wa Aleha Maktasabat. Wa Aleha Maktasabat. Wa Aleha Maktasabat. Wa Aleha Maktasabat. Rabbana la tu Akizna, Inna Sina, O Akana. Rabbana wala tu akhizna inna sinna o akana. Rabbana la tu akhizna inna sinna o akana. Rabbana wala tahmil alayna isran kama hamautahu. Rabbana wala tahmil alayna isran kama hamautahu. Rabbana wala tahmil alayna isran kama hamautahu. Allah ladhina min kablina. 
Alladina min kablina. Alladina min kablina. Rabbana wala tu hamilna malataka talana bi. Rabbana wala tu hamilna malataka talana bi. Rabbana wala tu hamilna malataka talana bi. Wafwana wakfilana warhamna. Wafwana wakfilana warhamna. Wafwana wakfilana warhamna. Enta maulana fensurna ala khawmil kafirin. Enta maulana fensurna ala khawmil kafirin. Enta maulana. Fensurna ala khawmil kafirin. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Someone want to try the last part, verse 286? Assalamu alaykum, Sheikh. Hey, wa alaykum salam. Bismillah, brother Jalo. Still practicing this one, so it might not be as good as the first one. <laughs> Man, it's all good. That's why we practicing. Alhamdulillah. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La yu kalifu lahu nasan illa wu aha laha ma kasabat wa alayha ma kasabat rabana latu aksibna in nasi na au aksa na rabana wala tahmil alayna isran kama hamal tahu alaladina min kablina Rabana wala tuha milna mala pakata lanadi wau fana wafilana warhana ansa maulana mafansurna Allah kaudil kafirin. Amin. All right. Amin. Amin. That, that's a very good uh, pronunciation for the first practice. Uh, a, the K H uh, and the K H T the kind of what, what kind of tricks me on that one, but I, I'll get it inshallah. Okay, and uh, uh, Sister Sky, if you remind me, uh, I will, I will uh, send you this text, and if you want, I can add you to the uh, the disciples group, mashallah, on WhatsApp. Now, who um, one more person want to try this? Mm -hmm. I'll give it a try, Sheikh. Ameen. All right. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. La yu kalifu lahu nafsan ila wus aha laha maka sabat wa aleha makta sabat rabana latu akithna inasina au akta na rabana wala tahim tamil alena isran kamal hamal tahu. Allah Athena min kablina rabana wala tuha milna mala takata lana bi wa afu ana wakfa lana wa hamna anata malana fan sarna ala kamil kafarin. Alhamdulillah. That sounds good. As we practice this, um, you will get more proficient and smooth in your recitation, but it sounds good. Oh, uh, every time we recite verses of Quran, it counts as a hasana, a good deed for us. Um, the Quran, one of the, uh, the Quran has many names, but one of the names of the Quran is the zikr. The, the Quran is referred, is referred to as the zikr, the, remind, the remembrance but it's also referred to as the recital, that which should be recited. So we must get our brains, nervous system, neurological structures of the body attuned to the vibration and frequency of this Quran. Sir. Yes, Bismillah, someone has a statement or a comment about this? 
No, so I was just saying yes, sir, to what you just said. Yes. This Holy Quran is the divine speech of Allah on paper. So when you're reciting it esoterically, it's 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 giving your nervous system an alignment to the vibration of God. Let me say that again. When you are reciting the Quran in the Arabic tones and frequencies, it's giving your nervous system and your physiological cells, atoms, bones, neurons, everything is being attuned to the vibration of God. I came up in the nation of gods and earth, peace to the God. We used to say, I'm God body. The way you become God body in Sufi terms is to recite the words of God until it physically penetrates the cells of your body. Sir. The body is composed of 90%, 75% of water. Water absorbs sound and vibrations. Islam. Um, yes, Brother Akil. Islam, please. Go ahead, Brother Akil. Okay. Bye. We're in and out is is all um that, uh, reciting learn uh, to learn uh what is this ISO cursi learning ISO uh -huh. cursi and then the other part of the uh, the second part of the merge um it's just I I literally feel myself getting high off of Allah, like I am, like I'll, I'll, re I'll recite it maybe, maybe around 50 times and then I have to stop and change the pace so that I can attack it from or receive it from a, another, uh, another vibration, if you will, another tune. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, because like I'm saying, the, the Quran is a higher frequency from the unseen world. Now we have um, in the Bible. There's a verse. Wait, 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 wait. You you didn't finish your thought. You said, and when you recite water, and then you didn't finish. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, there is a book by a brother named a Japanese scientist called. I think his name is Emoto. The name of the book is called Messages in Water. Masaro Emoto. Masaro Emoto, called Messages in Water. The book is so profound that it was stolen from my house after a zikr circle. Wow. I love the Muslims. I love the Sufis. I used to have <laughs> circles at my house every Friday. I had his book on my shelf. It's called Messages in Water. He played sacred texts into water froze it and took pictures of what came out and you would see these geometrical beautiful shapes in the water. He also played the Holy Quran over the water and the names of Allah over the water and it produced beautiful geometrical shapes. The book is so beautiful that somebody stole it out of my house after a zikr circle and I don't have it anymore. So may Allah bless that person because I'm sure they stole it out of a need for knowledge. So I ain't got no problem with that. Um, bring my book back, my book. Now let me stop. So um, when we recite the Quran, it is attuning you to the frequency of God according to physics. Every second, new cells are created in your body and cells are dying. Every second, you're giving birth to new cells. Metaphysically speaking, the thought forms that you have at the creation of those cells are stamped onto the cell. Whatever you're thinking is implanted into your cells. So when you sit and do zikr for long periods of time, anatomically, the names of God are being stamped into the consciousness of the cells that are created. 
when you recite the words of God in the Holy Quran, the cells that are created while you're reciting it have the vibration of God. Cells in your body that have the vibration of God do not get sick. Let me say that again. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Cells in the body that are created during chanting or during times of prayer are impervious to sickness and disease. So the more chanting you do, the more Quran you recite, the more Qasides you read, you're actually fighting off and preventing sickness by changing the physiological structure of your cells with the vibration of God. Now, this is eloquently said in the Bible where it says, in the beginning was the word, the word was, was with God, and the word was God. Then a very interesting part, it says, the word dwelt amongst men and became flesh. Ooh. That word of God dwelt amongst men and became flesh. So when you dwell on the words of God, dwell, zikr, repeat these words, they become part of your flesh physically. This is a science. This is the alchemy, the transformation of man and woman into divine beings that we already are. And the shortcut is reciting divine words. So these divine words will become a part of your consciousness and a part of your physical anatomy. Now, uh, this has been a very good class. I want to ask, are there any questions or comments? This was so beautiful, I'm speechless. Uh, you just blew me away. I, I'm like fighting, running downstairs to share this with my daughter. Uh, Please share it with her, man. Yeah. I mean, in the way that you can, um, it's, it's, it's a blessing. To receive these teachings, as one of my teachers told me, we have to hear these teachings over and over and over again until we get to a state of crystallized consciousness. Christ was not the only Christ. Let me say that again. Jesus Christ, Isa alayhi salam, was not the only one. There's a book called 16 Crucified Saviors. Even though in Islam we know Jesus was not crucified on the cross, but this idea of the logos, the word becoming flesh, is retold in 16 different cultures, and it's the same story of God, of man returning to the state of godhood. And Christ means metaphysically the crystallized consciousness of your oneness with Allah. So the station of Christ is crystallized consciousness that you're, are, you are one with God. And that only comes over hearing these teachings over and over again to the click, ah! So something happens inside of you that you shift from this idea of being immortal to being immortal. Now, um, there was supposed to be a, a, a someone on this call from Alabama. Um, uh, one of the new disciples said that they had a sister who wanted to take Bayat and Shahada. I don't know if she made the call or not, but um, if she is here, we want to give you the Shahada and Bayat at this time. Also, remember, uh, the, the two classes I'm doing now are free classes. The class on Sunday is a free class. Also, I have the class on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. You use the same link to join the class. Uh, this Wednesday, we'll be given to talk about shaking the flow. It's, a lot, it's going to be a lot of screaming. But you are welcome to send a deal or a donation to one of these teachers. If you want to send a donation, uh, look for uh, Shake Soupy on Cash App and send a donation. It's not a requirement, but these are some ways to receive Monica. And I'm going to tell you something my Shake said. Africans are very intelligent. My sheikh said the secret of giving donations to a sheikh 
or the secret of giving donations to uh, a mosque, my sheikh said in the Holy City of Tuba, he said, the heart goes where your money goes. Your heart goes to wherever you spend your money. My sheikh said, people don't like going to nightclubs and drinking. He said, people go back to the nightclub because their heart is attached to that place because they spent their money there. I say, yo, that's some deep science. You keep spending your money at McDonald's or Mike Arnold, you keep going back there because your heart is attached to that place because all the money you spent in that place. Mm. So when you give donations monetarily to a sheikh or a mosque, it makes your heart naturally gravitate toward that. All right? This is an esoteric science of money that I learned from my African uh, This is what we call a dia. In Wolof, we call it a dia. Give your sheikh or your teacher a dia, which is gifts. Sheikh Ahmed Obama went so far as to say, a dia given to the sheikh is a very important part of the Mori path. Now, for years, I never spoke about this. Because people in America, it's funny about their money. But I'm going to give you what they say in West Africa, you take it or leave it. Take out what Obama said. When you have no money and you give money, it will bring you money. A deer will find a pocket that's empty and bring money to that. He said, but if you have money, and you give a part of that money, it will make your money blessed. It will be fire time. How do we know that to be true? Mute your phone, please. The and five pillars. Uh, one of the five pillars of Islam is the zakat, to give to charity. The word zakat comes from Allah's Arabic name, azaki, which means to purify. From the word zaki, we have the word zakat. And from the word zaki, we have tashkia to last. So when you give in charity to uh, a sheikh or a teacher, it's bringing you that zaki, that and it's purifying any wealth that you have left. That's what we want to say about the idea. Uh, also, let me give this teaching. I gave a teaching that I never yeah. did before. I'm just laying down. I'm not going to your bed with my clothes on. I gave this teaching that I never no. did before. Now, I want everybody to uh, take note of the story. Mm -hmm. Arif, mute your phone. Mute your phone. Thank it's you. Not Please mute your phone. These are the five stations or pathways of elevation to the station of shape. I never gave this teaching before. <laughs> And I was talking to disciples about, uh, I have 12 jurons. A juron is a representative of the sheikh in their city. Of these 12 jurons in the past five years, four of them have already reached the station of sheikh, the makam of sheikh. I never talked about this before, but I think that it's time that I talk about this now. For me, it took over 20 years. It took over 20 years. I took my bayat with Serene Sayu in 1996. This is 2020. Serene Sayu left his body in 2007. My Sheikh Serene Morusek did not recognize me as a sheikh until 2009 or 2010 it was. I was, I don't, I was, I, I don't want to say. I was recognized by a sheikh before 2000, I was recognized by a sheikh in 2007. But I refuse to tell people that. Because it's some haters. When my sheikh recognized me as a sheikh again, uh, when Sri Sayu passed in 2007, 
I was given the station of shape by Shireen Busra Sam from the Holy City of Tuba. Long story. I did not tell anyone. About uh, two years later, 2009, my shape told me I'm recognizing you as a shape. And in fact, Shireen Sally was giving you the station of shape. And he said, this time, if you don't tell people, I'm going to erase a conference call and tell people myself. That's the only reason why I told people this. Now, out of the 12 jurors, it took me over 20 years to become a sheikh or be recognized as a sheikh. But what, what I, but it took 20 something years because I was piecing the path together. But for students who are studying with what I'm teaching, you may reach this level of Tarmia, Tarkia, Tasfia expediently if you Topan Deagle criteria. Topan Deagle, do what I'm telling you to do, inshallah. By Terry, stop sinning. It doesn't matter how much vigor you do if you keep doing bad deeds. It doesn't matter how much slot you make if you keep committing haram actions. I have people with me who have been with me for less than five years and they reach the Makam of Sheikh now. I'm going to tell you, I don't make anyone a Sheikh. I never ever said to someone, you are a Sheikh because I wanted them to be. It don't work like that. When someone spiritually does the practices and reaches a level of self-transformation, the shake, I am not the shake. I am not the shake. The shake is a, a station with God. That already exists inside of you that you must access the shake is a station of divine proximity of Allah that is covered by your bad deeds. It's covered by Nash Hawa Dunya Shaitan. When you defeat these Nash Hawa Dunya Shaitans, and do these five practices, you will gain access to that station inside of yourself. When that happens to one of my disciples, I get, <laughs> I get a revelation from, I, this is, this, I'm going to say, this shit is amazing. I had no idea this is how it worked. I'll get a revelation from Shreen Salihu, or I'll get a revelation from Sheikh Akhlabamba, or I'll get a revelation from Sheikh Ibra Fall that this person has become a shape. It's not something that I look at you and say, oh, yeah, I like this guy. He's a shake now. Let me tell No. I will not pronounce someone to have that makam because the, I didn't know that's how it works before the four people that I told that they were shakes, I was told by the master that they had it. Okay? So, I will not tell somebody they have it until I receive the message that you have. But what I do know is if you do these five things, the five stations of path of elevation to the station of shake, the first thing you must do is study every day and have a daily practice every day. Study the Kasai's of Sheikh Ahmed Study the Sufi text. Study what Sheikh Sufi is teaching. Watch the videos. Take notes. Study Kasai's and study Quran. The body of knowledge that you must study, Sheikh Ahmed Bamba says, before studying Tasawuf, you have to study Fiqh, Akita, and Tawheed. Before studying Tasawuf, you must study fiqh, Islamic law, basic Islamic laws. 
How do I make Salat? How do I fast in Ramadan? How do I uh, give Shahada? How do I make Hajj? What are the laws regarding the Zakat? You must study this, this fiqh. You must study Akita. Akita is the correct belief in the six articles of faith. What does it mean to believe in Allah? What does it mean to believe in the prophets? What does it mean to believe in the angels? What does it mean to believe? Uh, what does it mean to believe in Allah? What does it mean to believe in the angels? What does it mean to believe in the prophets? What does it mean to believe in all the holy books? What does it mean to believe in the divine decree, the day of judgment? You must study the six articles of faith. That's what we call Akita. Fiqh Akita and Tawheed. Tawheed is the science of the oneness of God. You must study Tawheed, the science of the oneness of God. Now, my teacher Farmer said there's an inner Tawheed and an outer Tawheed. Esoteric, esoteric Tawheed, la 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 la, there's only one God where they worship. Uh, esoteric Tawheed, inner teaching, God is the only reality. This is what you must study. Fik Akita Tawheed. And then top of all, daily practice. Number one made simple is to study every day and have daily practice every day. The great master Rumi says, a Sufi is one that has a daily practice. A Sufi is one that has a daily practice. I can say, I don't know anything that I did that was good. But I can tell you what, I do my zikr every day. <laughs> Anybody that's been around me, they said, man, that brother did some zip. I don't know if anything that I did that was good, but I have done some zikr or stuff a lot. Every day. Number two, observing the sharia to the best of your ability. You must observe the sharia to the best of your ability. Making it plain, make your salat. Make your salat, make your salat. Uh, people always are looking for mystical experiences. All of us are mystics of the unseen path. We all want to have some practice that's mystical. Well, I'm telling you, one of the most mystical things you can do in America is pray five times a day. You ain't got to look for some priming up the technique. I talked to one guy, said he's a soupy. He said, brother, I'm going to give you a secret practice. He said, what you got to do every day is stand on your head and put your feet on your wall. <laughs> he was dead serious trying to give me something mystical. I said, man, did you make Salat today? He said, no, nah, I don't know about Salat. What's I said, oh, Lord Jesus. Observe the Sharia. Study it and know it. Number one, study and daily practice. Number two, observe and respect the Sharia. Fast in Ramadan. Number three, keep in contact with and following the, the recommendations of the sheikh. In, Air, in Wolof, the recommendations of a sheikh are called your deagle. And deagle, sheikh and deagle fall. Deagle is a recommendation that comes from the sheikh. It's a Wolof word, N-D-I-G-E-L, in deagle. That's why... <laughs> Contact with and follow the and deagle that come from the shape. Yeah, but he wasn't watching TV, so I didn't want to watch TV. So, um, like I said previously, Sheikh Ahmed Mama's teaching can be sub summed up in two senses: Tope and deagle by Teddy is Wolof. Tope and deagle follow the and deagle recommendations of the shape. If I tell you to say la 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 a thousand times a day, do it. If I ask you to read the Sindidi every day, do it. If I ask you to say, Ya Hail Ya Kayum, Salih Bi Salam, Allah Habibi Muhammad, do it. Everything I'm telling people to do is nothing but worship God. Everything I'm telling you to do is a zikr. Everything I'm asking disciples to do is for the benefit of your soul. Uh, Top and Deagle, follow the Deagle by Terry, stop sinning. Number three, keep contact with uh, and, and follow the recommendations of the shape. Number four is KIDMA, and I put that in capital letters. KIDMA. K 
Kidma means service to the order, working under the sheikh. A simple kidma is if I'm having a class, tell people about it. A simple kidma, if, if I'm giving a program and put a flyer up, don't just look at the flyer and say, oh, that's nice. Send that flyer to people. That's a kidma. It's a service. Find out how you can serve the order. Do kidma for the order. Me teaching this class is a form of kidma. I'm working for Sheikh Ahmadabamba by teaching you about Islam. Teaching this class is a part of my kidma. One of the greatest kidma is feeding people. One of the greatest kidma is cooking food and feeding homeless people. Cooking food, feeding your family. Cook some food and give it away. Y'all heard me tell the story a million times. I'm not going to go into it today. The Sheikh Kadim Rasul, Sheikh Abdul Bamba's favorite name, his station is Kadim Rasul. That name Kadim come from Kidma. So our whole order is based off of Kidma, the name of our Dara. Dara is a Wolof word that means school. Dara is a place for work and service. The Dara, the name of our Dara, is Dara, D-A-R-R-A-H, Kidma Tool, K-H-I-D-A-M-A, Kidma Tool, T-U-L, Kadim, K-H-A-D-I-M. The name of our school is Dara Kidma Tool Kadim. The school that is doing Kidma for Kadim Rasul. You must do some Kidma. And the last one, the fifth principle is idea, donations or contributions that you give. So uh, can anyone tell me the five, and I never gave this teaching before, uh, this five station path of elevation to the station of Sheikh, from Sheikh Subiba. Who can give these, tell me a little bit about these five practices in your own words? I can give it a try, Sheikh. Yes, Bismillah. Uh, bismillah, Rahman Rahim. So there's, there's five core pathways to reach the exalted station of sheikhhood. Uh, the first being studying Wait, and tell having... tell me about the sheikh. What is the sheikh? Am I the sheikh? You're a reflection of the sheikh. What is the sheikh? The sheikh is... We... is it's just... How do you put it to words? The, everything is the sheikh. The, the sheikh is a manifestation of the baton it is reaching it's the insan it's it's on the path of insan kamil it's the sheikh is a way of existing a way of understanding and being in communion with the world okay in simple terms for everyone who's listening that's a good answer the sheikh is a state of consciousness that exists inside of your heart the sheikh is something that you can have access. The sheikh is a station of proximity to Allah that exists inside of you. The sheikh is Allah. That she said. Uh, it says in the Holy Quran, be conscious of Allah and Allah will be your teacher. Achieve God consciousness and Allah will be your sheikh. The level, the station of sheikh that we are teaching about is something that the shake is when all obstacles between you and Allah are removed and that power of Allah is flowing through you freely, that is the shake. We don't give praise to the water hole, the water hose. It's the water coming through the water hose that we need. I am not the shake. It's the it's the, the light of Nur Muhammad of Qadi Rasul, the light of Serene Sayu that is coming through me. I should have said, out of all these, the first thing is Mahabal to Sheikh, love for the Sheikh. Because Sheikh Ahmed Obama says a true disciple has eight qualities. And he said the first disciple, the first quality of a true mortar is love for the Sheikh, Mahabal to Sheikh. We will add a sixth one, which is Mahabal to Sheikh, love for the Sheikh. Because without love for your sheikh, without love for Sheikh Ahmed Obama, without love for Sri Zayu, without love for your teacher, you will have nothing.
There it is. So go ahead, uh, Jedi Raymond. Tell us about uh, the uh, the six pathways now. Yes, sir. So the first one is study and have a daily practice. And this is your basic Islam, your fiqh, akida, and tawhid, um, which is best summed up by uh, Quran and Sunnah, as Amen. above, so below. Amen. Uh, um, then it is to observe the recommendations of the, the Sharia, which is exoteric and esoteric. You have your fasting, you have your making your salat, the zakat, the hajj, the shahada. Um, but there's also the more esoteric of doing everything with ikhlas, sincerity, and trying to exist in a state of asafa, of purity. Following those ways can help you attain Sharia. I mean, uh, follow the recommendations of of your sheikh, of your teacher, and you gave us that beautiful Wolof expression, "Topen Deagle by Terry." It's as simple as that. Do what's recommended and stop doing bad things. I mean, kidma is service, and when you perform kidma, you're performing service to the sheikh. <laughs> The Tariqa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Anas, everyone, everything, every act should be an act of kidma. And before you do it, you should say Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So it is an act of worship. I mean Adiya, donations. It's it's a way of expressing sincere gratitude to your teacher and for the tariqa and the tradition that you are appreciative of the wisdom and knowledge that you're being exposed to. So it's a way of expressing gratitude, which is an essential aspect. And then Muhabba Tashaykh, as you said with the Morid Triangle, the entirety of the Morid path is, its foundation is, you know, hubba, is, is, is love. And without love, nothing else can germinate. It is the seed. That, that gives birth to everything else. So without love of the Sheikh, without love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without love of everybody in the tariqa, you, you, you're not practicing tasawuf. You're just playing the part of tasawuf. I mean, anybody can wrap their hair like this and put on a, 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 a juba from Morocco, but without the love, you have nothing. If you cook food for homeless people and there's no love in the food, they could have went to a restaurant and got it. You know, so this is a good explanation. Um, does anybody have questions or comments about these six pathways to this Makam of Sheikh that I never taught before? Anyone have uh, questions or comments? I have one, one more question earlier when you were talking about vibrations and you know the manifestation of the word in in Islam we have the sick oh, excuse me the 99 archetypes the 99 mm -hmm. names of Allah mm -hmm. and it, in order to manifest a particular attribute we invoke that name but I'm looking for shortcuts. So <laughs> by invoking the name Allah, the big zero that swallows up all of the other attributes is by reciting the name Allah, an expedient way to upgrade those 99 attributes, kind of killing 99 birds with one stone, so to speak. I had a mystical experience with Sheikh Ahmed Bamba in my room upstairs while I was wide awake. Everybody knows I love secret names. Man, listen. I have paid up to $300 for a shake to give me a name. Within the last six months, this experience happened upstairs in my room wide awake. Shake. I was doing some practices and I was meditating, thinking which one of these names should I use today? Sheikh Ahmed Obama says, and I'm talking about audibly, why not use the name Allah? That's it. 
He didn't say a long sentence. He didn't. He said, "Why not use the name Allah?" Then I did it click. I said, "Wait, there's no name greater than the name Allah." People talk about pay me this money for this secret name. I'll give you this secret formula. Sacrifice two chickens and go bathe naked in the river and rub your back on a tree and I'll give you what? No, no name is greater than the name Allah. Then I reflected. Sheikh Ahmed Obama said in his book, Masalik al Jinnan, listen to what the Sheikh says now. Sheikh Ahmed Obama said in writing in his greatest magnum opus on Sufism, Pathways to Paradise, Masalik al Jinnan, Sheikh Ahmed Obama wrote, the beginning of the path starts with the recitation of La ilaha illallah. And the end of the path ends with the recitation of Allah, 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 Allah. They, they put that in writing. It clicked. I'm like, wait, I read that years ago. Why am I out here looking for this name? Rush Kul Shak Shasun, Kem Shak Shasun, Tom Taka Jason, all these. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I get carried away. So now, Allah, 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 Allah. The number for Allah, if you want to have some wusul with the name, my teacher Farmi says, Sheikh Farmi said, the power of the name comes from two things. It comes from one, it could come from the baraka, the blessing of the Sheikh who gives it to you because he's been reciting that name and it's alive. Or it could come from knowing the exact number of the name that you're reciting. The name Allah should be recited at night while facing the east after rakat of Maghrib or after two extra rakats. You can, it's best to, after the, after after my grip salat, assalamu alaikum, alaikum salam. After the, the night prayer, you stand up and say, oh Allah, I have intentions to make two rakats and recite your name, Allah, for divine proximity. Then you pray two more rakats. And you sit there and you say the name Allah, 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 4,356 times. 4356 is the magic number. Oh, yes, it is. Is the magic number. How do we get four, three, five, six? The name Allah, Alif, Lam, Lam, Ha, in Arabic adds up to 66. To get the secret of a name, you times the number of the name by itself to get a number, another name, and that is the secret number for recitation of that name. 66 times 66 is 4,356. So you recite the name of Allah six times then 50 times, then 300 times, then 4,000 times. You do that after two rakats after my grip and that, now, oh, I made a mistake. My sheikh says, a name must be opened and a name must be closed. So don't just start Allah, Allah, Allah. My sheikh said, to open a name before you recite, take this formula down, you'd be a Sufi master. Before you recite any name or any zikr, my chick told me to open the name, you say a stock for Allah 70 times. So before you recite Allah 4356, you say a stock for Allah, stock for Allah, stock for Allah, stock for Allah 70 times. Then you recite the ismu, the name that you want to recite. Then after you finish reciting it, you send prayers upon the Prophet Muhammad 70 times. I like to use Salat al Fati 70 times. It doesn't have to be Salat al Fati. It could be Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Muhammad. Allahumma Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sayyidina Muhammad wa Sallam. Ya Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Make your two rakats after Isha with the intention of reciting the divine name of Allah for proximity with the permission of the Sheikh. Astaghfirullah 70 times. Allah, Allah, Allahu, Allah, Allah, now. Allahu, 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 Allahu. You can recite the name Allah, but when you put who behind any name, it activates that name inside of yourself. Nobody will tell you that. 
when you put the name Allah who, the who activates the Allah inside of the who, inside of you. Allah who, Allah who, Allah who, Allah who, Allah who, four, three, five, six, then Salat and Nabi 70 times. And that is the practice that is very good. Now, oh man, do y'all want some more Tasawoof or is that enough? That's enough. Huh? That's enough. That's a uh, lot. That's enough. So no, nah, that's, that's not enough. That's not enough. Buku by day. Buku by day. <laughs> Never stop. Yeah, that's uh uh now okay. I do want to give you one more practice that goes with that. It, because uh we are using this formula for modified. Every name of Allah should have a verse of Quran that goes with it. After you recite the name of Allah four, three, five, six times, I want to give you the correct science. Before you do 70 prayers on the Prophet, Allah, who, Allah, who, Allah, who, Allah, who, four, three, five, six, then you recite this verse of Quran 66 times. So you have the complete science. A lot of times the Sheikh will give you the zikr, but they won't give you the verse of Quran that goes with it. What I know from my Sheikhs is that every Ismullah, every name of Allah has a verse of Quran that should be recited with it. This is a super secret people won't tell you. They give you the name Rahman, but they don't give you Udullah or Udul Rahman, the verse of Quran that goes with it. They give you the name Yalatif, but they don't give you the verse in Quran, Allahu Latifum Bil Ibadihi. They give you the name Yahayu Yaqayum, but they don't give you Allahu La Ilaha Illahu Hayu Kayum from Ayat al Kursi. I want my disciples to have the name and the verse that goes with it. The verse with this is Hu Walawalu Wal Akuru Wal Zahiru Wal Batinu. You only have to say it 66 times. Who? Well, the Walu. The who is Awal, the first. The four names, Al Awal, Al Akir, Al Zahir, Al Batanu, are the four names of Allah that are key for having Mardi Fat. Used by Sufis around the world Shadalia, Qadriya, Tijani, Muridiya, Naqshabaniya, Chistia. In the inner teaching for Mardi Fat, the sheikhs are giving who al, al awal the first, al akir the last, al zahir the manifest, al batin the hidden. That's all there is in existence. So in the Quran, Allah says, "Who wal awalu? Who h u dash wal w a l awalu a w a l u." Who will awalu? Wal akiru, W A L dash A K I R U. Who will awalu? Wal akiru, Wal zahiru, W A L dash zahiru, Z A H I R U, the manifest. Who will awalu? Allah is the first. Well, Akuru, Allah is the last. Well, Zahiru, Allah is everything that is manifest. Well, Batinu, W A L dash B A T I N U, everything that is hidden or Batin. Who will a while, who will Akuru, will Zahiru, will Batinu? Who will a while, who will Akuru, will Zahiru, will Batinu? Who will a while, who will Akaru, a Zahiru, a Batanu? Who will a while, who will Akaru, a Zahiru, a Batanu? Who could tell me the verse of Quran that you recite 66 times in this formula? Who know? Who can tell me? Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Who will a walu while Akaru while Zahru while Batanu? I mean, that's very good. How many times? Oh, Obadiah, can you tell me the whole practice? How does this work? Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so you say a stock for Allah 70 times. You say okay. Allah who? For 4,356 4, times. And then you say the Salatul Nabi. Or do you close it with the Salatul Nabi? Close it with the Salatul Nabi. Okay, the so, Quran goes before the Salatul Nabi. Good, good question. Uh huh. I mean, and then you say the verse of the verse of Quran. Who, who, wal walu, wal akaru, wal zaharu, wal batanu, and then close it with the seventy salats on the Prophet. I mean, that's <laughs> it, man. I want my sandwich as big as his. Uh, <laughs> this has been a great class, Astaghfirullah. Uh, I see the beautiful disciples in the class who are here. May Allah greet you and bless you with more light. Uh, we will journey into the mystery of Sheikh Ibrahim, inshallah, on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. <laughs> I'm going to say some stuff you ain't never heard before, inshallah. Al Fatiha, Bismillah, Irrahman, Irrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yomidin Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in Idina Sirata Mustaqim Sirata Latina Namta Alayhim Gail Maktubi Alayhim Wala Dalin Allahumma Salli Allah Muhammadin Bia Daddy and Fasil Makhlukati Allahumma Salli Allah Muhammadin Bia Daddy Ash'arul Mawjudati Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin biya dadi huruf ilahi wa da'awati Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin biya dadi al-bidayati wa nihayati Min al-mawdumi wa mawduri ila abadi al-abadi Wa sallallahu ala khayru kawkihi Muhammad wa alihi ajma'in Barakhi sirin sayu, barakhi sirin sayu, barakhi sirin sayu Boxing sayu, boxing sayu, boxing sayu, boxing sayu. Bismillah, kus, rahmani, mu, rahim, michadam. Assalamu alaikum. See you all Wednesday, inshallah. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam.